rocking the health world with the healing power of radio. Robert Scott Bell shares from personal experience the triumphs of overcoming illness and the power of healing through mind, body, spirit, emotion, economy, and yes, even politics. Willing to go where the truth takes him, here is the voice of health, freedom, and liberty, Robert Scott Bell. What? You mean we're still on the air? Oh, this is great news. I've got something so important this hour. This is where it's no holes barred because we've got to, we've really got to weigh out and balance out the pharmaceutical bias of the mainstream media, of everyone in government, it seems, that is throwing money at a new industry that was created that put the CDC back on the map after its Legionnaire's disease debacle. I'm telling you that CDC is such a conflicted organization, especially as it relates to their new pronouncement that they what? They want to test every American for HIV. This hour, we're going to have Stephen Davis joining us. He's uh, author of a new book called Wrongful Death, The AIDS Trial. You want to read an intriguing story about what's gone on, the politics of AIDS, the biology of it, the, the lack of scientific integrity in that regard. This is the book. The Wrongful Death. I have links online at my website, rsbell.com, to the book, to a number of sites Stephen Davis will reference for you to re- really review the science even on this HIV testing nonsense, dangerous nonsense, that is just another CDC gift to the pharmaceutical industry. I have a few websites I want my listeners to hear about, particularly one that goes into the scientific citations as to what these HIV tests actually do and what they do not do, and maybe that's where we can begin today. Yeah, I put up a website called www.adeathsentence.com because that is the title of my next book, which will focus on these fraudulent, arbitrary, capricious HIV, uh, HIV blood tests. And on that website, people will find links to over 60 different scientific and medical studies that show virtually everything that's wrong with these HIV blood tests, starting with the fact, as you mentioned, that they don't test for HIV at all. They test for the HIV antibodies, that there are, in fact, over 70 factors in the human body that will cause a false positive reading on these HIV blood tests. And the fact that we are giving people this death sentence by pronouncing them HIV positive, when, in fact, there is no evidence, no scientific basis to make that diagnosis. So, uh, Robert, this is criminal. Uh, You know, I've gotten to the point where I say, who needs... Uh, to talk about terrorism from the outside, Mm -hmm. when in fact we have this kind of terrorism going on right inside our country. And it starts, as you say, with the CDC. Well, it's immunological ignorance and medical arrogance to think that they are the priests, the arbiters of what is and is not biological truth, and they've got it so wrong. And in this case, of course, as you mentioned, the HIV test doesn't even test for HIV. And in fact, there are so many ways that you can get false positives. What this is going to do is snare perhaps millions of Americans into taking dangerous drugs, not even necessary for people, uh, I believe and perceive, with immune deficiencies. Rather than building them up, you destroy them further. Well, let's, let's talk for a minute about why the CDC is even doing this. I mean, uh, in addition to the whole uh, money question, they claim that there are about a million people in the United States who are HIV positive, but maybe 300 to 400,000 of them don't know it yet. And so they want to test 300 million of us to find these 300,000 HIV positives. Here's, the pro- here's one of the problems with that. For every person who is tested positive on their initial ELISA HIV blood test, only 20% of them will actually be positive when they go through the entire confirmation process of testing also on a Western blot. Uh, The fact that now the medical authorities, our so-called government gurus, I call them welfare scientists to be honest, have actually acknowledged that the bulk of the initial deaths in the first years of the so-called AIDS epidemic, they said, were actually caused by the treatment for it. In other words, the AZTs of the world actually eradicated many of the so-called AIDS sufferers. And Stephen, am I correct in saying they've acknowledged that as truth? Well, they, they don't like to do that, but that is exactly what my book uh, is all about, Wrongful Death, the AIDS Trial. I, I put this drug, AZT, on trial with uh, witnesses in sworn testimony, all based on over 900 scientific and medical studies 
that prove that 90% of the cases of AIDS from 1987 to 1997, 90% were caused by the drug AZT. In fact, 300,000 Americans died as a result of taking AZT, not as a result of some imaginary, perhaps, virus called HIV. And, and we're doing it again now. I mean, we've, we've, we, we acknowledge that the fact that these new drugs called highly active antiretroviral therapy, or HEART, are more people are dying of the liver failure from the drugs than they are from HIV or AIDS. There's a very interesting website. It's called staynegative.org. If you go to that website, you see pictures of men, several of them in diapers, with uh, sunken faces, um, uh, pot bellies or distended abdomens, and lumps on their backs and their necks. And the website says, and it's called HIV, not fabulous. However, this particular disease that is being pictured there is called lipodystrophy. Lipodystrophy is not a symptom of HIV or AIDS. It is a symptom of the HIV drugs. This website should be called HIV Drugs, Not Fabulous. And this is one of the lies that they keep perpetrating on the American people. I happen to believe the American people are smarter than that. And pretty soon we're going to wake up and realize that the entire HIV AIDS hypothesis has been based on um, some megalomaniac's pronouncement in 1984 that HIV caused AIDS and as you have so clearly pointed out, is now self-sufficiently sustaining itself on money. Well, yes, M money as well as, as uh, repetitive propaganda or brain, uh, what we call brainwashing. Because if you notice, there's no other disease where they always say, you know, polio, the, the virus that causes polio. But every time you read AIDS in the newspaper, it always is followed by HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. If they don't want you to forget. Like, why would it need to be done that way if the science were so solid in that? And why is there such an investment, a religious fervor, to this belief that HIV has to be it? And as a matter of fact, Robert, every medical and scientific test proves that HIV cannot cause AIDS. It fails every medical and scientific test. For, just very quickly, for example, the very first test you run on anything that you want to say is the cause of a disease is that you must find that cause in every case of the disease. Now, it's very clear. It makes common sense. If you have uh, tuberculosis, you have to find the tuberculosis bacteria in every case, or it couldn't cause that. And in the case of AIDS, we have thousands and thousands of cases of AIDS with no HIV and no HIV antibodies. Well, right there, we should be stopping and saying, hey, this, this doesn't make any sense. It's not possible. Let's go back to the drawing board and find out what really does cause AIDS. Well, too many careers have been made on this. And as you mentioned, billions of dollars have also been funneled into a new industry that is buying a lot of nice stuff for a lot of welfare scientists. They don't want it to go away. But as I said, having the pharmaceutical industry incestuously related to our government is a very dangerous situation. And that's what we've got today. And AIDS is one of the worst of the symptoms, if you will, not the disease itself, but the, the, the you know, the, what it's done, if you will, to the, the integrity, whatever was remaining of the biological sciences of immunology. And you've recognized it and acknowledged it so well in your book, Wrongful Death, uh, The AIDS Trial, as well as I have the link on my uh, website at rsbell.com in the description of today's show, uh, also in the link to uh, deathsentence.com. Those of you who are still s stunned, sitting there stunned listening to this, the fact that the HIV tests don't test for HIV, and also that the false positives, you know one of the key areas they want to test? They want to test all pregnant women in America. Number one, I think, right up there, reason why you get a false positive is because you're pregnant. Where is that going to lead? Will they steal your children if they suspect HIV? If you don't want to drug them with chemotherapy agents or heart therapy? Well, you know, the other question we get a lot was, well, you know, AIDS is only affecting like a small segment of the population. If that, why should I be concerned? Well, now you, you have a reason to be concerned because the CDC wants to throw a net around you and your loved ones, even your kids to test them for this, uh, what I call a phantom retrovirus. And of course, with all the false positives that occur, how many of your kids are going to then be corralled into a life or a death caused by the medicines for AIDS, in fact, which is, is, is granted, is acknowledged even by those medical so-called authorities, although as Stephen Davis says, they don't like to acknowledge it, but it is a fact. So how will it affect 
the rest of the country, Stephen, that doesn't think AIDS affects them? Well, Robert, we have to understand that the CDC has been talking for years about getting everyone tested, but now, this week, they have put it into action, and the American Medical Association has endorsed this. And what they want to do is they want everyone who gets a routine physical or when you go to the doctor or the clinic or the hospital and have your blood tested, they want to test it for HIV as well. Now, as I said, as I started to say earlier, uh, we're going to start telling uh, 1.5 million people that they are HIV positive. Now, imagine the emotional and psychological trauma the, the family stress, uh, the social rejection, and the financial hardship that goes along with that. I mean, even the Los Angeles County Department of Health has recognized that there are risks associated just with taking the HIV test, not even being called HIV positive. But 1.5 million people are now going to be told they're HIV positive, and that means statistically, Robert, that it may not be you, and I'm talking about people who are listening to this show, it may not be you, it may not be your loved one, but it's going to be someone you know or someone you work with. This issue is going to touch everybody in the next couple of years. And what they're going to do, uh, well, let, let me just read you a couple quotes uh, from people who have responded to this. For example, quote, more diagnoses may help win bolstered funding. That comes from John Peoples, a branch chief of, over HIV programs at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Re uh, Resources. And then this certainly expands the rapid HIV testing market. And that's from Ron Spare, the chief financial officer of Orishore Technologies, one of the three companies that sell rapid result HIV tests in the United States. This is great for the manufacturers of the test kits. This is great for the manufacturers of the HIV drugs, but it is not so great for the rest of us. Well, and now we're looking at acknowledgement in the mainstream media that AIDS is no longer killing all patients. A new study that's come out. We've known this for years. You've got Magic Johnson. That's a famous issue there. But many people that they, they at first started calling them HIV non-progressors or, or maybe they have a strange genetic flaw or code that makes them not susceptible to the phantom retrovirus. And yet they still proceed to say we need to test everybody and then get everybody that's tested positive right left center on these medications that are also destroying their immune system as well as their liver as you mentioned the number one killer under heart is not aids it's liver failure well in addition to that robert there's a study just released uh, in the august 5th issue of lancet magazine which clearly says that the heart drugs that are being given today are even worse than the ones they started giving 10 years ago it has not improved uh, the, a lifespan. It has not helped people live longer. It has, in fact, worsened their immune deficiency and caused more problems. So, uh, you know, they, they try to feed us all this information. But, in fact, if you read the studies themselves, you find out very often the studies don't say what they claim they say. And this is how I got into this whole business. As a matter of fact, in 1996, actually, I already thought... Uh, I, I intuitively felt that there was something wrong with this idea that HIV caused AIDS, uh, probably because of my experience in government and my experience in medicine. But when I read Peter Duisberg's book called Inventing the AIDS Virus, I suddenly found all this scientific evidence that, that proved HIV cannot cause AIDS. And uh, if you, if you uh, actually read the studies, you come away with an entirely different impression of HIV and AIDS than what is being fed to us in the media today. More and more people are acknowledging, and even in the scientific community of the world over, questioning the hypothesis that HIV is the cause of this immune deficiency. I've argued that it was not all oh, for, for years, ever since I've been on the, sh the radio show for sure, but even earlier. And of course, you'd have to violate all previous knowledge of the immune system and biological interactions with bacteria, virus, and otherwise to accept the hypothesis and acknowledge that, oh yeah, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense. And now the scientists around the world are beginning to question it, but it's like saying the emperor wears no clothes. And we are saying the HIV emperor is absolutely buck naked. And these tests that uh, Stephen Davis are referring to, that the CDC wants to throw a net around all of you. Informed consent, not there. It's in a general form they're proposing in all hospital settings or any testing settings. So you may not even know that you can opt out. Um, and this is another issue when you rely on government and its involvement with the pharmaceutical industry to protect you. They're not. Stephen, 
Welcome yeah, back. Robert, people are not going to be told, first of all, that this test does not test for HIV. It tests for the HIV antibodies. And, you, you know, every other test that we're told uh, for antibodies, if we have them, it means we're immune from that disease. But in HIV's case, if we have the HIV antibodies, it means we're going to die from this deadly disease cause AIDS. It, it, like you said, it, it turns immunological uh, knowledge on its head and asks you to make so many contortions to believe that it's real. And yet, again, billions of dollars have been spent. It's an inf- a very effective form of hypnosis that they've been able to do. HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, know that it's not true, but what are you going to do about it then? That's the positive side of the equation. The people that are living with this so-called diagnosis or non-diagnosis are the ones that are rejecting the drug therapy, living a clean lifestyle, going organic, taking holistic things, good probiotics, all the things we talk about on this show, and yet those are not trumpeted. They're anomalies. They're genetic defects that that could happen. Exactly, exactly. And this, this HIV diagnosis that these people live with every day, uh, again, we have to go back and, and, and ask, are these HIV tests, worth anything now for an hiv test to be validated in other words for it to be have any meaning whatsoever it it should find hiv positive antibodies in people who only can also find the hiv virus in them or vice versa that if you test hiv negative you should be able to not find the hiv virus in them that has never ever been done so we don't have a validated HIV test, and we haven't since Robert Gallo filed the patent on this two hours before he announced that HIV is the cause of AIDS in 1984. And as we mentioned a few minutes ago, there are so many things that will cause a false positive reading on these HIV blood tests, including having had a, a, a flu vaccine, a flu shot, um, having a cold, uh, perhaps being vaccinated for hepatitis uh, A, B, or C, um, uh, even generalized warts and, and, and drinking too much unpasteurized cow's milk will create a false positive. Seventy things in the human body that will tell you you're HIV positive when you aren't. And, and on top of that, Robert, we don't have any gold standard. We don't have any standardization for determining the results of these tests. Depending on, yes, right Stephen, now, hold on, Stephen. we got to go to break, but depending on what country you're in, we'll change the definition of whether you have the so-called AIDS or not. Literally, you take the test, same result, different country, you don't have it. Different country, you do have it. That's science? Come on now, wake up and smell the good organic coffee in this case. And it is, I know, still shocking to some. I want to talk with uh, Stephen Davis. I know we've covered a lot on the testing issues. We may do some more on that as the CDC proposes to test all 300 million plus Americans for this uh, retrovirus that can't be tested by the the drug inserts themselves say not to be used as a diagnosis tool in saying you have AIDS or not. Now, Africa is another issue. People say, well, Africa, look at, there's AIDS all over Africa. Listen, the same stuff that was killing people in Africa for as long as there's been Africa is still doing it, although only worse, because now we're throwing drugs. We're subsidizing drug use, horrific drugs into places that are have abject uh, malnutrition, poverty that's causing, uh, there's no hygiene, uh, sanitation is lacking, all of these things causing disease in and of themselves. Now you want to throw toxic drugs on top of it. So, Stephen, changes in Africa, people say, well, what about AIDS in Africa? Well, in Africa, Robert, you do not have to be HIV positive in order to be diagnosed with AIDS. Uh, And you don't have to have a a, 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 a dysfunctional immune system either. All you have to have in Africa to be diagnosed with AIDS is a persistent cough, persistent fever, a weight loss of over 10%, and diarrhea. It is strictly based on those four symptoms. Well, Robert, those symptoms are symptoms of malnutrition and poverty. So uh, the the most amazing thing is that they keep screaming about giving all these antiretroviral drugs to these people in Africa when, in fact, they're they're admitting that you don't have to have these retroviruses uh, to be uh, sick with AIDS. Um, This is uh, sometimes, Robert... The logic over the illogic <laughs> overwhelms yes. me. I just can't make any I, sense. Yeah, I watched you, it. You saw in Toronto, they, they lambasted this woman that came from South Africa, had the audacity to talk about using herbs and vitamin supplements for these people instead of drugs, and they did they, they sabotaged her display. I mean, they, these people are evil, in my opinion. Well, it, it, you know, it's even just before the break, you talked about going from one country to another and getting a different diagnosis. I want to tell you, you don't even have to travel. 
you literally in this country can get a different diagnosis depending on what lab does the HIV blood test and what criteria are used and there's four different kinds of criteria whether it's the FDA or the Red Cross or the CDC and each one of those can come up with a different result for an HIV test so uh, it, you know we we have a real problem and in my mind before we give someone a death sentence before we tell them they have got a terminal illness we better be doggone certain of what we're talking about and in this case we are far from certain and i i don't have time to talk to you about it today but i need to ask you to to have me back because i want to talk to you and your listeners about the hiv jail that is being proposed by new york city to put uh, where they're going to put people who don't want to take these hiv drugs didn't they, didn't they uh, steven didn't they do this with tb they did. They, they did. did. They had TB jails in New York. This is this. Now they're going to jail you if you get the so-called bogus HIV uh, diagnosis that can't be detected from the, the test itself. And then you don't want the drugs. Oh, sure. Go to jail. We'll either force you or you're not coming out until you accept it. This is freedom in America. This is where it's going. This is the wake up call that has to occur. And I, you know, Stephen, I hope you make it on every radio show and TV show to, to, to let everybody know about this, because I, I, I have only one person. We need many more. Well, I, I hope to. I gotta, we've got to spread the word fast enough for the American people to begin to understand what has happened for the last 22 years and, and take steps to stop it now before it literally ruins us and ruins our public health system and, and ruins our, our, our freedom in this country. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, yeah. we got medical fascism basically already, and I cover that issue every week. The fact that there is not equal standing or freedom for those that believe in holistic health care, those that eschew the, the modern, so-called modern medicine and say, you know, I think I got a better way to go, and my, uh, my ancestors understood it. I want to go back and do more of what they do, and they look at you like you're a fool or a nutcase, and I could care less what people think of me, but I think what they're doing is, is beyond foolish. It's like a, a mass insanity and a suicide pact. And the thing that, you know, if there's a message that we would say, what are you going to do? The CDC wants to test everybody. Are you going to talk to your congressman, senator, write a letter to the president, say, this is insane? Look at the science? Or are you going to lay back and go, oh, yeah, they can test me. I'll just have another beer. Well, I'll tell you what I would hope every one of the people listening today will do. When they go to their doctor in their hospital the next time and, and they give blood, I want to make sure that they ask their doctor, first of all, to prove to them that the HIV blood test is, go is going to be accurate when the results come back. Secondly, what it means, why is it that if it proves they have the antibodies to HIV, it also means they're going to get sick from AIDS. And people need to educate themselves. Don't believe a word I've said. Go to my website, www.theaidstrial.com, and do your own research. It's right there. All available for you. Stephen Davis, my, my honor to have you on board, and we will do a follow-up, absolutely. We'll talk about timing on that. And I also want to say I've got links to his site at rsbell.com, as well as Olympic athlete Lee Evans talks about this issue and his suspicion that this uh, everything cracked up about AIDS is not exactly right. Also, one of the best blog sites on the web to see real, you know, some very interesting science going at it in the web uh, blog world is at barnesworld.com, B-A-R-N-E-S-W-O-R-L-D. Dot com or dot blogs dot com. Either one will get you there, as well as uh, you know links to Harvey Bialy's book on uh, Peter Duesberg. Boy, there's so much more we can do. I've got lots more coming on next week. Thank you, Stephen Davis, and the book, of course, uh, on the AIDS trial, this death sentence issue. 